Here we are today at the local duck pond. Watch as these majestic creatures, these beasts of the wild, enjoy a splish splash in the cool autumn waters. Some would say this is an opportune time to take a photograph for a painting later. You're absolutely correct, Arthur, as usual. So this is action time now. And ducks are really interesting, especially the white ducks. Uh, I think they hold the light so beautifully, which is a great advantage, I feel, when painting. And it's something to take very good notice and attention of, I believe, because if we're wanting to paint light or, or get light or a light effect into our subject or into our finished painting, the lighter, the better the subject is, the easier it is for us to paint it. So once again, just getting that shape and mass into position. I really do love the, the attitude, the, the positioning of that right hand uh, duck. It's really setting up nicely. I'm really starting to get some lovely sort of movement and positioning especially of the, the the duck there so and I think probably the trickiest part with painting chickens ducks um, any sort of probably um, water bird is getting the the legs and then the mass of the the body to sit on the ground not sort of hovering or sort of feeling like they're floating. And also, actually a good thing to mention is that the actual uh, setting is super important as well. So a lot of times uh, when people sort of will learn and know what I paint and well, that I do paint and so whether it's uh, they've got chooks or something or chickens I should say, I'll then say, oh, do you have them in a pan or this or that? And I'm 50% thinking about the, or inquiring about the setting as well, because that really does become super important. So now I'll just add a little bit of the yellow ochre into the ultra blue and white. Just pushing the shape. And another great little trick is to actually have these shapes a little bigger than they actually will end up or should be or need to be. Because quite typically it is very easy to cut something down. The harder thing to do with especially oil paint is to actually make something bigger so easy to make it smaller so I'm just bringing in some of the uh, softer synthetic sort of brushes uh, they're a, a real revelation with painting this style of brush even though we did have a type of sable brushes and synthetic brushes but they used to uh, flare out and or gather they, they just did not last very long at all so that's why the especially the rosemary and co brushes they're, they're really marvelous and they certainly do make painting easier and more achievable I think for a painter to get the effects of feathers leaves whatever we're painting and this quite a bit of reflected blue light in uh, the ducks so that's what I'm getting in there now uh, a lot of this work is sort of set up for the the, f the overall effect so I always find the more interest and depth I can get into the sh uh, shadow areas the shady areas the, the areas that aren't really like a marquee sunlit like that 
area on the ground that I put in on the left hand side there, or this area now. These are kind of the, the areas that grab the eye, but it really is the shadow areas that really do most of the driving of the painting, meaning that what gives it its power, overall power, is the shadow area. So even that shadow of the cast off the little bowl, uh, I'm still aiming one to get that light and dark enough, but also to get as much depth in there as well. But we do have to be careful that I don't uh, overdo it and overwork it too much, especially in the shadows, because we it's a delicate balance that we want depth, distance, quite a minute of amount of certainty and accuracy. But then we don't want to um, put too much that it actually takes away. So, and I think that's the finer balance of painting we do almost end up becoming a conductor almost like the conductor of a symphony of music we're needing to keep an eye or as a conductor with an ear on all the different instruments so and if we were to think of our brushes and paints as our instruments we really do need to make sure we have a good control and understanding of that. This is a little, uh, what's called a, a liner brush or a script brush. It's just a little neaf brush. I would love it if it had a, or love it a little more if it had a longer handle. I do love the long handle brushes. But it is a, 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 a synthetic, um, quite cheap as a general rule. And boy, they, they do quite a bit of the, the uh, heavy lifting especially towards the end, especially to get those little accents. Whether it's a dark or a light or a, a redrawing of a shape. Really marvellous. And you can see how much uh, French ultramarine blue I've used in that background. I'm really trying to exaggerate it. That looks just a little dark and a little too blue, but... We can come back and just adjust that a little later. So with, with all shapes, we're not wanting or needing to put in the brush mark all in the same direction. That's, I think, one of the key things to getting contours, whether it's a hill or a, a bowl. Got to be careful that we don't contour it too much that it looks uh, a little predictable <clears throat> excuse me okay this is a little bit of invention there's just a few little sort of um, leaves or flowers or but it's more there to push and move the eye around some of those little flowers or flicks and flecks or as a few people have um, called them Butterflies, my little butterflies, Collie's little butterflies, which I think that's quite sweet. Uh, so yeah, we just have to make sure we don't put too many butterflies in, that's the trick. So it's pretty well starting to take shape now. Really like, I really like that, uh, the amount of blue that I've got in that shadow where the feeding bowl is. Normally the, our atmosphere is the, the one driving force that gives us uh, a quite a, a bit of reflected light. And reflected light normally means uh, how and when and our ability to get a three-dimensional shape. Because even though this is more of a yellow ochre, this is more, say, reflected from the ground, but now the blue is reflected from the sky but what it's doing is showing that three-dimensional shape up over the head as you can see I just took the eye out uh, sometimes if they're in the wrong spot it's better to 
definitely scrap it and start again. So just putting quite a nice little dark in there. But they're not round, they're not oval, they do have a few little uh, sort of little nice little interesting shapes to them. I do love to be able to just travel around the scene right at this end. This is the moment where it doesn't hurt to have a little break and see how things are going. <laughs> 